All right, hello everybody and welcome to this week's live stream. I am Margie Remmers Davis, creator of the Fast and Easy Way to QuickBooks Online Pro Advisor Certification. I am delighted to have you here. I love spending this time with you every week to go over some of our exercises live and interactive so you can uh, work along with me and ask questions and all of that good stuff. So if you do want to interact with me, make sure that you give Ecamm permission. Ecamm is the streaming service that we use. So in order for me to see who you are when you uh, when you say hi, I do need you to give permission. And uh, Joel is uh, posting that in the chat so that you have the link there if you don't have it already. Um, for those of you who may be watching this recording, this is a live uh, uh, a live stream that we do every week in our free Facebook group, the QBO Gym Locker Room. And uh, we would del be delighted to have you join us. Links, of course, are below. If you are here live with me, then that means that you are already part of the locker room and I love you and I love to have you uh, be a part of this. So um, we are gonna be walking through a couple of exercises today related to subcustomers. Now, subcustomers is um, a topic that you need to know about for for the advanced level certification course. So uh, we are gonna be talking a little bit more advanced things here today, but if you're brand new, if you're just starting out with QuickBooks Online, don't be shy, just dive in and do the best that you can and then it will come, you know, of course, later. Good morning to all of those of you who are chiming in with good morning. I love to see you guys. All right, so let me uh, hop over to my desktop here. So that, um, all right, so if you, so this is the, uh, the Facebook group that I was talking about are, uh, this looks a little bit different for me because I'm an admin than it will for you. But um, you see up at the top, um, as a member of the QBO Gym locker room, you have access to nearly 100. Um, I'm gonna break that. I'm gonna get, I wanna be able to say over 100. So I gotta get to work and get some more exercises out there created. But it's close to 100 right now. Free exercises to get you hands-on practice using QuickBooks Online. That is all, what, what that is what we are all about is getting that hands-on practice. So um, if you are inside the Facebook group, <clears throat> you'll notice that up here in the featured section, you have a link to a spreadsheet. And this spreadsheet is where you are going to find all of our free exercises. So it looks like this. You can see there are some tabs down at the bottom. Um, the, the advanced tab, which is what I'm on here right now, these are all of the exercises that come from our advanced certification course. And we offer the exercises themselves to you absolutely free so that you can walk uh, through and learn these concepts. Um, of course, if you want the full course itself, there's a, a fee for that, but the exercises anybody can access. So you'll notice that there are uh, exercises from our basic level course, our advanced level course, um, a QBO gym, which I'll talk about in just a minute as a separate. Um, there are inside your free QBO A account. And if you don't know how to, um, if you don't know how to access the uh, get your free QBO A account, or if you uh, you know if you're on here live, then you know. But if you, if you don't know, uh, if you're watching the recording, you don't know how to get your free QBO A account. You don't know how to access the sample company, which is where we're going to be typing. Um, then uh, you want to make sure there's uh, there will be links below for all of that, of course. But if you're here live, then you know what we're talking about. All right. Um, so inside your free QBO A account, um, in the training section, there as Intuit has a smattering of pro advisor challenges, which are kind of like hands-on exercises. Um, they give you a, a scenario and you have to actually do something. But the, the way that they have put together is, 
I don't know, it's kind of difficult to follow along. And so what I'm in the process of doing, and when I finish this, this is going to hit us over the 100. But the <laughs> when I finish this, um, so this is uh, putting those exercises into our signature style. And then, of course, as a member of the locker room, you have um, the ability to submit uh exercises that you would like to see created, then uh, we put them in this list here. You see all this, it says Margie create, Margie create. So yeah, I've got a lot to do. <laughs> I've got a lot to do. Um, but I also have down here are re some of our retired exercises. So they are, um, uh, the retired exercises are exercises we created for previous versions of the test. So you don't have to know this information for the test anymore. But um, but you do, you know, but the exercises are still out there. So, um, you know, why not do them? Why not use them? So anyway, so that is our spreadsheet. The exercises that we are going to be um, talking about today, as I mentioned earlier, are coming from the advanced level certification course. And the reason that came up to my mind, so we're going to be talking about these right here. We're going to be just talking about these Three. Let me highlight them here so you can see. All right, so these three are what we're going to be talking about. Um, first, using sub customers. Then we'll talk about projects. I don't think we'll have time to actually walk through the projects exercise, um, but we will definitely do the convert sub customers to projects. So the reason it has come up to my mind is because I am in the process of re recording all of these exercises. And so if you want to watch me, walk through so not on the live stream but if you want to have a record of me walking through the actual exercise sometimes people go do the exercise they get lost they click something wrong um, and so it's helpful to just see somebody else do it i'm re-recording those and you can see here um, i'm highlighting them in yellow as i'm doing them so anyway so this past week i re-recorded this exercise right here, set up and create reports with sub customers. And um, there is a very, if you are in the advanced level course, okay, if you are working on getting your advanced certification, there is a, actually, let me make my, how do I do this? I'm still learning my tools. Okay, so I wanna just like be able to say it, okay. If you are getting your advanced level certification, if you're working through that material, if you're taking the test, there is this one, um, there is this one concept that they want you to know, and it's not clear to me at all why they want you to know this because it's so, um, um, it's I don't know, it's not used very, it's not used very much, so so. I don't, and I, I don't know, we'll go over it in a second, but it's just strange to me that this question is on the test. And, um, and so I just wanted to highlight it and talk about it um, today. So that's why we're gonna go over this exercise. Um, and then related to that, we will talk about um, projects a little bit, okay? So let us go ahead and get started. Enough of me chatting. Let me hop back to my desktop, okay? All right, so here we are, and we're gonna go ahead and get started. We're doing this, um, this one right here, not that you want. We want this link right here, which is set up and create reports with sub -customer. So as always, we start in the sample company. So I'm gonna go right here. I'm gonna move this a little bit so that I can go to it back and forth easily, okay. All right, so we're gonna start in the sample company. Here I am, this is just a fake company, but uh, to get to the sample company, what I what you do is you click the gear icon and then hit sample company. So this is inside your free QBOA account, okay? There are a number of different sample companies that you can use, and I'm gonna create a YouTube video just on the sample companies because I think a lot of people aren't aware of um, the different options. So as it says at the beginning, make sure that you do all four parts of this exercise in the same company uh, sample company session. Um, as you can see over on the left-hand side here, there are uh, different um, uh, the different parts. And so we're gonna talk about this kind of all together and then we're gonna talk about how it compares to projects and um, 
Yeah, so let's get going. All right, so part one. One of Craig's customers, Freeman Sporting Goods, has just acquired a new location. I'm gonna stop right there, okay? And actually I'm going to, um, how do I do this? Nope, that's not it. Okay, wait, this is so important. Okay, I'm gonna stop right here. Why is this not, there we go. Okay, this is really important. You know every time I make my face big, that means it's super important, okay? So that the scenario said, so-and-so, one of Craig's customers, Freeman Sporting Goods, has just acquired a new location, okay? This is what's important. When you are in QuickBooks Online and when you are taking the test and you're understanding, you know, you're piecing together all of this information, I need you to understand that there are two different types of locations. I'm gonna create a whole video just about this because people get confused, okay? There are Craig's locations, so maybe Craig himself, Craig is your business owner, okay? Your business owner has multiple locations. He sells stuff from different places, okay? That's one type of location. Then Craig's customers might have locations, okay? So Craig does the work, in this case, for Freeman Sporting Goods, okay? Freeman Sporting Goods, that customer has multiple locations. Okay, so don't get confused between the Craig's customers and, or Craig's locations here, I just said it. Don't get confused between Craig's locations, your business owner's locations, and Craig's customers' locations, okay? What we are talking about, when we're talking about sub-customers, we are talking about customer locations. So you have the parent customer, Okay, the parent customer, in our case, Freeman Sporting Goods, they have sub locations, they have sub customers, and those are gonna each represent a different location. Now, that's the case in our example here. In real life, it may just represent different things. So I once had a client who, she had a contract with a giant corporation and different departments within that same corporation would contract with her to do trainings for them. All right, so that's still, that's a sub-customer. So the department of that big customer is its own kind of entity. It had its own like billing stuff, you know, all everything had to go through that person. That is a sub-customer, okay? So that's what we are, talking about here and uh, so important that you guys, so important that you keep that straight in your brain. Okay, let's go back to the screen. All right, so um, back to what I was reading. One of Craig's customers, Freeman Sporting Goods, has just acquired a new location, okay? So that is a sub customer. They will be renting the empty lot next to the local high school and will be setting up temporary tents whenever there is a home game. They have contracted with Craig to make sure the shrubbery is cleaned up and the grass is mowed so that they can easily move the tent and set up when necessary. They have decided that their Ocean View Road location will manage this and pay any bills incurred for the new lot. But Craig wants to track his income and expenses for this separately. And that's really the key thing is that Craig wants to keep track of the income and expenses separately for this location than for anything else. But the Ocean View Road location is the one that's gonna get the bills, that they're gonna pay and everything, but the, this is all tied to Freeman Sporting Goods. That's the overarching, that's like the umbrella company that we are talking about. All right, I'm seeing that a couple more people have found us and are hopping on. Um, all right, I'm so sorry about the technical difficulties earlier. I hope more people can find us and, and uh, get going. I hate for you to miss this. All right, so how would you set this up for him? Let's go ahead and go to step one, okay? We will create a new high school lot customer that is a sub-customer of, not Freeman's, not the big Freeman, but the sub-customer sub Ocean View Road, okay? So Ocean View Road location from the left navigation bar, we're gonna select sales and then click customers. 
Okay, so going into uh, our sample company, we're going to click sales and then customers. So here we are in that. And then, so we did from the left navigation bar, we selected sales and then click customers. All right, step two, click new customer, not the arrow next to it. Okay, so right here, we're gonna click this button, not this button, but this button here. All right, uh, there it pops up, go back to, oops, there we go. All right, steps three through five. In the customer display name field, enter high school lot, check the is a subcustomer checkbox, and in the parent customer field, select this ocean view road. Okay, so we're gonna do just that much. So here we are in the customer. In the customer display name, I'm going to say high school lot. High school lot. Okay, and then I'm gonna scroll down, see where it says here, can you see it? Yeah, see is a sub-customer. When I check that, it's gonna say, okay, who's the parent customer then? Well, our parent customer is that Ocean View Road location. See, Ocean View Road is already a sub-customer of Freeman, so, but that's what I'm gonna select. And as soon, then I have the option, do I want to bill the parent customer? or do I want to bill it individually? Well, remember from our scenario, this Ocean View Road is gonna take care of all of the bills. And so we're billing the parent customer. We're not billing, the high school lot doesn't have anybody specifically to bill, okay? So we're billing the parent customer. When I selected that, all of this stuff from the parent customer came in already, okay? So uh, let's go back to our exercise. Uh, so this is what I just talked about. Note that the parent customer is selected. Contact information will already appear. Okay, we want it to be bill with parent. Okay, so click save. Okay, so now we're gonna click save. Here is our new high school lot. Okay, uh, da -da, we did that. Okay, now we're moving on to part two of our scenario, okay? So part two, Craig bought $100 worth of fertilizer from Tanya's nursery that will be dedicated to the high school lot. So this is, this is a purchase for the high school lot. Then he went over and did the initial clearing of the lot, which he charged $350 for. How would you record these two transactions? Okay, so the first one is a purchase that he wants to say, okay, this purchase is for the high school lot. And the second one is an invoice that he's sending. So who's he gonna send the invoice to? Not the high school lot. He's gonna send it to the Ocean View Road location because we said bill the parent, okay? All right, so let's walk through this. Note. In a real life scenario, you would need to make sure that the customers can be specified on expense forms. This is done in accountant settings on the expenses tab under track expenses and items by customer, okay? In the sample company, this feature is already turned on. Let me just show you real quick. This isn't in the exercise, but we'll just show you real quick. The uh, gear icon, account and settings, And let's see, expenses tab, right here, okay? It says track expenses and items by customer. You have to have this on in order to be able to say this particular expense is for this particular customer. And I believe that is only available with, at, the, at QBO Plus level. Okay, so the version that we are using in the sample company is QBO Plus. So it's here, so it must be that it's available on QBO Plus, okay? So that was just this note right here. It's already turned on, okay? So step one, we're gonna create the expense for the fertilizer purchase. Click plus new and select expense, okay? Plus new and select expense. Okay, going back to our exercise, steps two through four, um, complete the expense transaction as described in the scenario. In the payee field, select Tanya's nursery. 
In the category field, select job expenses, and in the amount field, we're gonna enter 100. Let's just do that much, okay? So here's our expense. We're gonna say Tanya's nursery. All right, and, and you notice that it already has here job expenses and an amount. That's because there is a setting in uh, accountant settings that will pull in the last transaction if you want it to. When I created the exercise, that wasn't turned on in the sample company. Now note, I noticed lately it is turned on in the sample company, so I don't know what I'm gonna do. All right, so anyway, job expenses already selected. What did we say, $100? Okay, now let's go back to our um, go back to our uh, exercise. Um, note that okay, no, we did this much in the category field. Select job expenses in the amount field. Enter one hundred, and in the customer field, select high school lot. Okay, whoops, high school lot right here in the customer field. Okay, so this is not billable. We're not turning around and charging them for the fertilizer. We're just keeping track of how much we're spending for this, uh, for the high school lot project. Okay, now the reason that we are putting it in the category field and not in the item details field is because the fertilizer is not something that we keep track of. It's not a product and expense, uh, I mean, it's not a, a product and service that we sell to other people and we don't keep track of how much we have of that specific thing. So you could, in the description, just say fertilizer so that you just are keeping track of, oh, okay, now we know how much we bought for that Ocean View Road location, what that was, okay? And that's what I have here in the note, okay? All right, so step four, we're just gonna click save and close. Okay, right here, save and close. All right, so that is the expense. The next thing we need to do is that invoice, okay? So we're gonna create the invoice since we are already in the high school lot customer information screen, we can just click new transaction and select invoice. Okay, so here we are, new transaction and select uh, invoice. Notice that the expense that we just did is not listed here. That's because we're in the customer list and typically like it's not a normal thing to track expenses by customer. So that's why it's not one of the options here. But for the uh, for this, we can, uh, all of the, the customer related transactions are here. So we can just click invoice right here. And because we did that, all right, it'll come up. And because we did that, um, it automatically populates all of this stuff for us at the beginning of the invoice. And so now we just have to fill in the rest of the information. Okay, so we did that one, step six and seven. Note that the customer information is already filled in. I just said that we're gonna complete the remainder of the invoice as described in the scenario. Um, in the product and service field, we're gonna enter landscaping installation and in the rate field, we're gonna say $350, okay? So landscaping, actually if I type installation, I think that'll be quicker. Okay, landscaping installation, we're gonna say $350. Okay, going back to our exercise. Now we're just gonna click save and close. And of course, that as I mentioned, that top portion's already filled in. That's because I selected it, that new invoice right from that customer screen. Okay, so now I'm gonna click save and close. All right. So now we're moving on to part three of our scenario. So step three, 
Craig would like to, rep uh, to see a report showing his profitability so far for the new high school lot job compared to the other Freeman Sporting Goods locations. How would you create this report? So this is the reason why we're create, why, this is a reason why we do everything, guys. We do everything so that we can report on it. That's our whole reason for being. Our whole reason for being as bookkeepers is so that we can re report. All right, so, um, all right, so let's see what to do. Okay, step one, QBO already provides a, a profit and loss organized by customer, so we'll start with that. From the left nav bar, click reports, then uh, click profit and loss by customer. So we're gonna go to reports. And then we're going to go to profit and loss by customer. All right, so notice when I do this, it's going to have as the columns, the individual uh, customers, all of, all of uh, Craig's customers now are shown as columns. And then here are the accounts, the income and expense accounts there on the left-hand side. But we only want, we only want Freeman Sporting Goods. We don't want all of these, uh, we don't want all of these uh, customers, okay? so. Let's go to step two. Just shows each customer as a separate column. Da, da, da. That's what I just said. All right, step two, click customize. Okay, so we only want it to show, we only want it to show specific customers. Okay, quiz, pop quiz. What are we going to do? How are we going to say, what feature do we use when we customize? What do we use when we only want a specific subsection of things. When we want it to narrow down to only look at some things, what do what feature do we use? Let's see. All right, I don't see anybody popping up with the answer. What are we gonna do to customize this report to only show the specific, um, only show specific customers? Three, two, one, all right, the answer is filter. Filter always means that we want, only want to look at some of the information, okay? That's what filter means. Yay, somebody said filter, somebody else said report period. Nope, report period is about dates, okay? So if we only wanna look at specific dates, we would use report period, but the answer is filter if we only want to look at certain things. So in our case, we only want to look at certain customers. Okay, let's go back to our exercise because I'm sure I'm way ahead of myself. All right, step, is this hidden by my head? Okay. All right, steps three and four. To only select some of the information in QBO, we use a filter. In this case, we only want to see the Freeman Sporting Goods location, okay? Um, and that should, Joel, that should be locations with an S because Freeman Sporting Goods has multiple locations. Yay, I'm seeing other people say filter. Yay, you got it, good. All right, so um, so going back here, we're gonna select customer. I don't actually have to check this because as soon as I start checking in here, then that'll automatically be checked, okay? So I'm gonna scroll through and I'm going to select all of the Freeman Sporting Goods, okay? So here is the regular, the parent company, Freeman Sporting Goods. Here is the Freeman Sporting Goods Ocean View Road location. Here is the high school lot. The high school lot is a sub-customer of Ocean View Road, which is a sub-customer of Freeman Sporting Goods, okay? And then we have another location here, which is Twin Lane, okay? I just wanna remind you again that we are talking about Craig's customers' locations. If you missed my big speech earlier, don't get confused between the customer locations and the client locations. Your client is the, com is the person that you're doing the work for, okay? It's Craig is your client, okay? And Craig may have multiple locations. That's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about Craig's customers who have multiple locations, okay? These are the people that he's doing the work for. All right, so now that we've selected those, we're gonna click Run Report. 
Let's go back to our exercise, make sure I don't get ahead of myself, okay? So we've selected the Freeman Sporting Goods locations and we um, click Run Report, okay? And here is the report for us to look at. The report now shows the total for each account in the rows for each of the Freeman Sporting Goods locations. Okay, so here again, here's our profit and loss, our accounts, our income and expense accounts. And here by column are the individual, uh, are the individual customers and the sub customers. Okay, and so you can see the totals here below and you can see right here the high school lot. Um, the uh, the income and expense. So here's that three hundred and fifty dollars uh, income, and here's that one hundred dollar expense that we just put in for high school lot. Now, here is the tricky thing. All right, I'm gonna get my face back on because this is important. Okay, all right. For those of you who are taking the advanced certification test, okay, <laughs> this. This is the thing I said in the beginning that for some reason, and it's not at all clear to me why they want you to know this particular thing, but it's important, but they do. And so you have to, you have to understand it. It's so tricky. Okay. If you want to compare products and services for these sub customers, then we have to customize the report. So now what we wanna do is we wanna see a report that compares the profit and loss for each product and service that we sell, okay? And we only want it for Freeman Sporting Goods. So for the Freeman Sporting Goods locations that we have, they want us now to compare for just those locations, they want us now to compare the products and services. So how do we do that? Okay, that's what we're gonna do next. And you have to, this is like a thing you have to know for the advanced certification test. So let's hop back to my desktop, okay? And um, that is, okay, so here we are. We're gonna go to the, uh, the, um, the exercise here, we're gonna go to scenario part four. Finally, Craig would like to see a report showing his profitability of all products, okay? Should, I guess it should say products and services on just the Freeman Sporting Goods locations, okay? So profitability of products and services for specific sub-customers. Okay, that's what they want you to know how to do for the test, okay? So how would you edit your report to do this, okay? Well, you're gonna change the display. I guess my head's a little bit in the way there, but that's what it says, change the display. In the top section under display columns by, we're going to select products and services, and then we're gonna click run report, okay? So in this top thing, Display columns by, we're now gonna select products and services. Now, what is it right now? The columns are the sub-customers. Now the columns are going to be products and services. Okay, so if I click that, click run report. All right, and now we have all of our products and services up at the top and all of the accounts over on the left. So you could see down, if you see the net income, you could see which, why is, I don't understand why you guys, why this keeps popping up and why it's on your screen and not my screen. Let me see if I can get it over there. Okay, so now you could see for the period of time, the profitability, income and expense for each of the things, okay? All right, and we have some that are not specified. But guess what? This report is still filtered by Freeman. This is only, we are only looking at Freeman now in this report. And the report itself doesn't say anything about that, does it? There, it says profit and loss by customer, which customer? It just says the products and services, it says income and expense, it doesn't, there's nothing on this report now that tells us that it is Freeman Sporting Goods. So if I go back into customize, I can see that it is still customer, 
Okay, so, so we know, you and I know, that it is still Freeman, but the report doesn't say that at all. So um, in the exercise, we have uh, the report. The display columns are now the individual products, is what we just talked about. The report is still filtered by, that is only showing transactions for the Freeman Sporting Goods location. So in a real life scenario, it would be a good idea to edit the report header to indicate that, okay? So if this were real life, it would make sense then to change the report header so that um, it actually will say for just for Freeman Sporting Goods, okay? So, all right, that is the, um, that is the end of this exercise. I hope for those of you studying for the advanced certification course, I hope that, um, I, I would recommend that you do this again for yourself and you understand, if you haven't been walking through it with me now, that make sure you understand this profitability by products and services because for some reason they want you to know that. All right, so sub-customers, I think part of the reason, so let me actually go back to, nope, that's not what I meant to go back to. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay. So um, it's possible, I, I think maybe they want you to know all of those steps to create the reports and edit and customize it and all of that stuff. I think they want you to do that because um, using projects is so much easier. So using sub-customers is kind of complicated to think through, but projects is something easier. Now we don't have time to do it today, but I do have a projects exercise um, in, let me go back through to uh, this, okay. So I do have a, um, in our, in the spreadsheet. So this is the report. This is the exercise that we just did. Set up and create reports with subcustomers, okay? So you'll notice I said critical here. That's because what I just described is critical. Like you have to know that for the test, okay? There is an optional exercise which is um, using projects because projects is so much easier. It has so much better reporting tools. And um, so I highly recommend that you go through this exercise, profitability by projects. Um, and also in last month's episode or last month's issue of the QBO gym, we also uh, went over in detail, I'm still in the spreadsheet guys, I'm just on the QBO gym tab, okay? Um, so in the March issue of the QBO gym, the strength training section is all about projects. So let me know, so let me show you what I mean by that, okay? So here is uh, the QBO gym. If you don't, if you're not familiar with the QBO gym, then um, it is our subscription-based product that gives you um, real life experience actually being a bookkeeper. So it's simulated experience that you're gonna go in every month and work on our fictitious, fictitious business owners books from soup to nuts, from sitting down and uh, processing the money that came in until you actually run report, reconcile, run reports, do all of, the, you know, all of that stuff. So you're gonna sit down it takes about three or four hours a month to just sit down and like be a bookkeeper. It's like you're being a bookkeeper for, uh, you know, for this fictitious business owner and you get a new set of exercises every month, okay? And they are divided up into these four sections. So we have warm-ups, which cover uh, just the money in, the money that, uh, money in that came in, and the money out that came, that you did, processing bank feeds. Then we have the cardio section, which is things that Craig has asked you to do. So uh, if he's asked you to send reports, um, if he has asked you to pay, or not send reports, but send, uh, send out invoices, if he's asked you to pay bills. So those are the things he's asked you to do. Um, and then there is always this strength training section, which is always teaching you the nitty gritty details of a specific feature 
here in QuickBooks Online, and it's all related to what is happening in Craig's business. So last month in the March issue, and by the way, if you sign up for the gym, and now Joel would be a good time to put that in the chat. If you sign up for the gym, you get access to all the previous issues. So you don't worry if you missed anything, it's all available. And last month, so in March of uh, 2023, our strength training was all about projects. And basically what happened to Craig is he is working for um, a, uh, a woman, Whitney, and Whitney is a wedding planner, and, and she has asked him to, uh, she's asked him to clean up uh, clean up, you know, Craig is a landscaper. So she's asked him to clean up the locations for these two weddings that she's working on. And so Craig wants to track the income and expenses for both of these locations that he set up for Wendy. And so you listen to the whole, you watch this little video, you listen to the whole scenario, like what has happened with Wendy. You test yourself by asking a little, uh, answering a little questions. And then you have these exercises that go through how to set it all up, how to track the expenses for the two different weddings, um, and then how to compare the projects and see what his profitability was and all of that stuff, okay? So that is um, available in the gym. And in the exercise, the free exercises, you still have uh, an example of using a project. So in this example, we're not comparing two projects to one another, but in this example, um, it is one project. So it is a Japanese fountain that Craig has, is uh, building for a Japanese restaurant. And um, some, you know, things go wrong and and we'll, and you get to track like what the profitability is of that. So I'm not gonna go through that today, but our last exercise for, th for today is we are going to walk through converting sub-customers to projects, okay? Now, the reason that you wanna do this is because as you'll see when you go through the projects exercises, is that projects is a much better tool. And so it has all these fancy, um, has all these fancy reports. It's easier to, you know, to do, it's easier to wrap your mind around and uh, it's just so much better. So, <laughs> so because it's so much better, again, I don't know why for the advanced test, they want you to know this crazy thing about sub customers, but Anyway, they do, and we've gone over it, so we're good. So the last thing we're gonna talk about today is, um, is converting sub-customers to projects, okay? So let me, I don't think I opened this one up, so I'm going to open it up. Again, this whole spreadsheet that I'm looking at is available for anyone who is in the locker room. You just click the um, in the featured section that this is where you find the link to all of these exercises, okay? So here is, um, oops, that's the gym, I'll close that. Okay, so here is the exercise we're gonna wrap up with today, which is converting sub-customers to projects, okay? And here is our scenario. So Craig has decided to use projects instead of sub-customers to track the profitability of his jobs. How can you easily convert his sub-customers to projects? Now, just a word of warning as we walk through this, when I created this exercise, the high school lot was not a thing. Okay, so this is assuming that the exercise assumes that you're doing it in a fresh sample of the, comp of the sample company. So we'll see, what I do now might just be a little different than the, the exercise we're walking through. But I think Joel, uh, Joel go ahead and post the, this link so everyone has it in the chat, the converting sub-customers link, so we can just walk through this in our last couple of minutes, okay? All right, so, um, so step one, first you'll need to turn on the projects feature, click the gear icon and select account and settings. Okay, so we're gonna go back to, let me just close that thing. Okay, so we're gonna go back to our, our uh, sample company. I'm gonna go to the gear icon, account and settings. 
Oh, great. Now I'm totally frozen. All right, there we go. <laughs> All right, so we went to account and settings, step two. Okay, now we're gonna go to uh, select the advanced tab, then turn on all job-related activity in one place, okay? So I'm going to um, go to the advanced tab. Okay, and you'll notice that when I'm in account and settings, as I move my cursor, it highlights these different sections. And the way account and settings works is that you have to kind of open up a section so that it's available for editing and then you make the changes. So here is projects, organize all job related activity in one place. That's what we're gonna turn on. So with my cursor right in this section, I'm just gonna click it. And now I turn it on and then I click save. Now you wanna make sure that when you save, you give it a chance to kind of refresh. See how it's refreshing now? What it's doing is it's making the change to add projects in, uh, in, your, in the sample company. So you wanna make sure that you give it a chance to do that because if you click off of it too soon, then you won't have projects available to play with. All right, so it's taking a minute, so let's go ahead and go back over here. So once that's done refreshing, then we're gonna click done and step three then we're going to return to the customer list from the left navbar navbar we're going to select sales and then customers all right and here's this little thing that is popping up again all right i don't know what's taking it so long i have the thing i have the little done button here okay there we go so oh okay so now it says on so you have to give it like i said you have to give it a minute and now i'm going to click done right there all right sample company come on you can do it we're almost done we're almost done all right and now that i have turned it on you can see that there is uh, projects listed on the left nav bar. It wasn't there before, okay? So now we're gonna go, what did I say? We're gonna go to sales and customers. Sales and customers. All right. And I'm gonna go to step four. Only sub-customers that are set to bill with parent can be converted to projects, okay? So we talked, when we were setting up the high school lot, remember we talked about billing with parent, we wanted that high school lot, all of the bills to go to that one location. Well, in order to convert uh, sub-customers to projects, they all have to be set, the sub-customers all have to be set to bill with parent. That's because, and this also is important for the test, um, that's because um, when you convert subcustomers to projects, all of the all of the information for the subcustomer will revert to the to the project. Okay, so the one downside of projects is that you can't have separate billing addresses for each of the individual things. There's a way to get around that. I'll tell you in a second, um, but. Anyway, so we want to make sure that we have everything built to sell, uh, built to parent. So we're going to do that with each of the locations. Okay, so first we're going to do that with Ocean View Road. We'll see what happens. I'm not sure if we'll be able to because we now have the high school lot thing. So I'm not sure we can even we'll even be able to convert this one. But let's try. We're going to go to Ocean View Road. We're going to click Edit. I don't want to get ahead of myself here, okay? So step five, click edit, that's what I just did. Step six and seven, now we're gonna select bill uh, parent customer, okay? So, <clears throat> remember how we did this before? Okay, bill cu parent customer, right there. Check that, and then click save. All right, and, uh, and now we're gonna repeat that for the uh, Freeman Sporting Goods Twin Lane location, as well as the Shara Barnett, Barnett Design sub-customer, OK? 
Okay, so we're gonna go back to customers right here. We're now gonna do this for the twin lane location. Click edit. Check bill with parent. Click save. Click customers. Let's go find Shara here, right here, Barnett Design. Click edit. Come on, Shara, there we go. Click bill with parent. Click save. All right, so we did that with all those. Now step eight. Now we're gonna click customers, then to go back to the main customer list, and then we're gonna, on the pop-up bar beneath the money bar, pop-up beneath the money bar, click convert now, okay? Click customers. This is on the test, guys. For those of you who are studying for the advanced certification, knowing how to convert subcustomers is on the test. That's why I have an exercise for it, <laughs> okay? So right here, we're gonna click convert now, okay? This is a one-time conversion. Let me go back to the R. Uh, so we clicked convert now, step three. Click the checkbox at the top to select all of the customers, then click convert three, and then continue when prompted, okay? Notice, so here are the, th in the picture, there are three um, of these that are gonna be converted. In our picture, there are only two. Why is that? Because the uh, because you can only convert subcustomers that are one level deep, and and we did the high school lot in the same sample company. So that sample company or that that one location that has a subcustomer can't be converted. Be, it, it can't be converted if it has a subcustomer, and it can't be converted if it is a subcustomer. So the high school lot's not on here, and the other location's not on here, okay? So that's why it looks a little bit different for what I'm doing right now than what you see in the, um, in the exercise. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna select both of those things. Notice these are the subcustomers. These are the projects it's gonna become, okay? So it's gonna become that. Here it says convert two, not convert three, because I only have two. I'm gonna and then I click continue, because I'm, yep, I'm ready to convert. Okay, then continue when prompted. All right, step 10. Now click go to projects, so you can, we can see what it looks like. Go to projects. Okay, and now we are finished. So you can now easily, you can now see that that's not right. You can now see, Joel, if you could fix this, <laughs> you can now easily see, this, I think that's what I'm supposed to say, the profitability of these former customers. If desired, add the hourly cost rates of Craig's employees to track time costs associated with each project. You will talk about hourly cost rates in the projects, if you do the projects exercise, and then certainly in the one in the gym, then uh, we go into that in quite a bit of detail. Okay, so going back here, this is what it's talking about. Here are the hourly cost rates, okay? And then here uh, are the projects, and again, we'll go, th if you do the projects exercise, then you'll see what all of this means, and we'll click through it and, and uh, all of that stuff. One other thing to point out right here is um, that this, you now have the opportunity con to convert from subcustomer right here from the project center. This is not on the test because it didn't exist when they wrote the test. Okay, <laughs> so this is new, but it's another way to convert subcustomers. Okay, all right. I promised that there would be uh, one more thing. Um, you can, this is kind of a, a nifty little tool. So projects, 
not this is not on the test okay so this is I'm now stepping outside of the box of the test this is now just about you and I talking about <laughs> talking about sub customers and projects okay so one of the things about projects is it cannot it's only one level deep so you have a customer and then you have you can have multiple projects for that customer but you can't have a sub project of a project okay so you can't have you know, project A and then project, you know, A1, A2, A3, can't do that, okay? But what you can do is you can have a single project underneath a sub-customer. This is not on the test. Don't get confused as about this. This is just me telling you in real life, like a like fun workaround thing that can that can help you, okay? So you can have one customer that has multiple sub customers and then within that customer they can have multiple projects remember i mentioned that i had a client who had a giant uh a, a, a contract with this giant company and then each department was um contracting with her to to do different things okay so we have the giant company then you have the sub customers, which are each of those different departments. And then each of those departments can then have be doing multiple projects. So you could do this project, then that project, and that's how you can combine sub customers and projects. And that can be very powerful, but it's not on the test. All you need to know is just the sub customer and the projects. Okay, we are done. We are a little bit over, but I don't feel too bad because uh, we had so many technical issues in the beginning. Thanks for those of you who stuck with me and came back. And um, if you have any questions about this, I realize it's a kind of a higher level topic. That's why it's on the advanced. That's why it's in the advanced test and not on the basic level test. Although I will tell you that um, just while I'm waiting to see if anybody else has comments, <laughs> I will tell you that when you read my story about why I got my advanced certification, um, or when I, in this, in the story, I tell you how grateful I am that I learned advanced, that I learned projects, um, that I had gotten my advanced certification right away after taking basic, that's because I learned about projects and my very first customer needed projects. And so I was so glad that I had gotten my advanced certification right away and hadn't waited because otherwise I wouldn't have been able to land that first client and she ended up being super lucrative. So, so um, anyway, all right. I don't see any more questions coming in the chat. So I think I'm going to call it a day and say have a wonderful weekend. Um, lots of celebrations happening this weekend and uh, enjoy the, your time. And I will see you next week. I can't wait to hear your success story.